Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to solve some trigonometric equations with multi-angles. And you can see now here, we're, we're going to be doing like the, exactly the same process here. But now you can see my variables, instead of being multiplied by a number, they're being divided. Except for this one, but you can see the fraction is still less than 1. All right. So just like how we did multiple angles when they're multiplied by a multiplier, like 2 or 3, um, we're going to basically treat solving the trigonometric equation exactly the same as we would. But then at the end, what we're going to do is we're going to take into account our multi-angle, as well as take into account our constraint, which in this case is going to be the same as my last video. We're only going to be looking for solutions between 0 and 2 pi. So first thing we do is we need to solve for the tangent of x divided by 2 equals square root of 3. I need to isolate for my x. So remember, the way that we did that is um, we took the inverse tangent, or the inverse trig of whatever your problem is, but you take the inverse tangent of both sides. So if you take the inverse tangent of both sides, what you're left with is x divided by 2 equals tan inverse of square root of 3. Basically asking us, what is the tangent inverse, or what, what angle does tangent equal the square root or positive square root of 3? So what we're going to do here is we're going to create our unit circle here. Now remember, when we're looking for the angle that, create, that has tangent for the square root of 3, again, I'm kind of like ignoring right now the x divided by 2. There's three points on our unit circle that can create the square root of 3. So we could have the square root of 3 over 2, comma, 1 half. We could have the square root of 2 over 2, comma, square root of 2 over 2. Or we could also have 1 half, comma, square root of 3 divided by 2. Now remember, sine, cosine, and tangent are very, fairly basic, where cosine equals the x value, sine represents the y value of a coordinate point. But tangent represents the y over the x. So there's only one of these angles when you do y over x is going to equal to the square root of 3. And that one is this angle, which is pi over 3. Now remember, tangent is not um, only equal to positive square root of 3 in the first quadrant, but also in the second or in the third quadrant. So that'd be pi over 3, 2 pi over 3, 3 pi over 3, 4 pi over 3. So we also have a solution here of 4 pi over 3. OK, so what we have done here is by finding our values that make tangent equal, um, or the inverse tangent of square root of 3, what we do is we have two solutions. And those two solutions are x is equal to pi over 3 and x is equal to 4 pi over 3. Now, what I said is pretend like you're solving for all the solutions. And if you're going to find all of the solutions, we know that pi over 3 and 4 pi over 3 they have a difference of pi between them. So rather than always adding 2 pi, 2 pi n to both of these, I can just add pi n. So I'd start with pi over 3, and I would add pi n. Because if I take pi and add it to pi over 3, I get the next solution for pi over 3. And if I add pi again, that takes me back up to the same angle of pi over 3 and a different solution. right? However, though, this problem is a little bit different. We're not solving, we are solving for x, but our x is not isolated yet. So this is x divided by 2. All right. Um, so it's x divided by 2. So now, to solve for x here, I have to use my inverse operations, which is going to tell me to multiply by 2 on both sides. Now remember, when you multiply a binomial by a number, you've got to make sure you multiply that 2 times both of the terms. So therefore, I'm left with x equals distributed property here. 2 pi over 3 plus 2 pi n. All right. So if I keep on adding up my 2 pi n, I can be able to get to this. Now remember, though, our solution has to be between 0 and 2 pi over 3. So let's find at least the first angle, 2 pi over 3. Well, that's pi over 3, so 2 pi over 3 is over here. So that's my first angle. That's my first solution. However, then it says to add 2 pi. Well, if I add 2 pi to that, I'm going to be over my initial angle. If I add 2 pi to this, then my angle would be larger than 2 pi. So the only solution, I can't add 2 pi to this and have a solution that's still between 0 and 2 pi. So my only solution is 2 pi over 3. Done. So now let's go and get the tangent of x divided by 2. I'm going to use this unit circle again. Um, if you notice on the unit circle here, this one produces square root of um, the square root of 3. This one is going to produce square root of 3 over 3. However, it's negative, though. So tangent is negative in the second and in the third quadrant. All right. So a lot of students, though, I don't want to confuse you all the time. Um, I didn't show my work as far as how I solve for x, so I'm going to do it in this one. If I want to solve for x, I've got to undo taking the tangent of x divided by 2. To 
To undo that, I got to use my inverse trig function. So the inverse of tangent would be tangent inverse. And I take tangent inverse of both sides. So tangent inverse of tan of x divided by 2 is just going to leave me with x divided by 2 equals tangent inverse of negative square root of 3 over 3. And that's basically what I'm doing here, which I, I just kind of said I didn't write it down. So now we're trying to take the tangent inverse of negative square root of 3 over 3. Remember, when you're taking the inverse, basically what you're doing is saying, what angle, what angle produces the tangent of negative square root of 3 over 3? So I'm going to go back over to um, this diagram that I have over here. Actually, no, I got time here. Let's just use this one. So at least I showed you, though. Hopefully, you can see if you do y over x, if you do 1 half divided by square root of 3 over 2, reduce that, what you get is square root of 3 over 3. But we need to be negative. That means my angle has to be in the second or the fourth quadrant. So if I have here is pi over 6, this angle in the second quadrant here is going to give me the angle 5 pi over 6. Then if I have the one in the fourth quadrant, that's going to be 6 pi over 6, 11 pi over 6. Again, just like the last one, if you're going to solve for this, so my two solutions are, you could basically say x over 2 is equal to 5 pi over 6, and x over 2 is equal to 11 pi over 6. And again, what I want you to understand here is think of it as like finding all of the solutions. So if you think about it by adding like all of the solutions, you could add 2 pi to both of them. Okay? But what we notice is, even if I was going to write all the solutions, I don't need to add 2 pi to 5 over 6 and 2 pi to 11 pi over 6. I can just add pi to 5 pi over 6, and that takes me to 11 pi over 6. And if I add pi again, it takes me back to 5 pi over 6. So really, I can rewrite this as pi n. And I don't even have to write my next solution, because that's basically being covered by this, um, by this equation. However, we're not trying to find all the solutions. We're only trying to find the solutions between 0 and 2 pi. I include this, though, because there might be an opportunity for me to add multiple angles within, or have multiple angles within 0 and 2 pi. However, though, now I solve for x. So what I'm going to do is multiply by 2 on both sides. Make sure I use parentheses. So I have x is equal to, apply to distributive property, 10 pi over 6 plus 2 pi n. Well, I graph 10 pi over 6, which looks like it's just going to be short here. And then if I was going to add 2 pi, well, all I got to do is add 2, 2 pi over 6, and I'm, and I'm outside of my uh, range of 0 between 2 pi. So I can't add another angle and still be within 0 and 2 pi. So my, only, my final answer is just the solution 10 pi over 6, which we can reduce here, uh, divide by 2, which would be 5 pi over 3. OK, so now let's go and get into cosine and sine. Uh, again, we're going to get the exact same thing. I'm just not going to show my work here. We're basically taking the inverse cosine of both sides. So I want to be able to determine, well, when is cosine equal to 1 half? So cosine is going to equal to 1 half here at, again, the angle of pi over 3. But it's, cosine is just not, um, inverse cosine of 1 half is just not equal to pi over 3. It's also in the fourth quadrant, which that's going to be pi over 3, 2 pi over 3, 3 over 3, 4 over 3, 5 pi over 3. Okay, so there's actually two solutions here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write the, my two solutions out. But remember, we're not having x. We're using x divided by 2. So x divided by 2 is equal to pi over 3 plus 2 pi n. I have to add my 2 pi n in this case instead of pi n. I have to add 2 pi n because these two angles are not pi away from each other, angle away. Um, there's really there's no consistent way for me to add an angle to, to get the other angle. And then I have x divided by 2 equals 5 pi over 3 plus 2 pi n. So now I go ahead and solve for x. So I multiply by 2 on both sides. Multiply by 2 on both sides. Again, make sure you put use parentheses here so you can apply distributive property. OK, so when I go ahead and solve, I get x is equal to 2 pi over 3 plus 4 pi n. And then over here, I get x is equal to 
10 pi over 3 plus 4 pi n. Now, remember, our solution has to be between 0 and 2 pi. Is 2 pi over 3 within our solution? Yeah, 2 pi over 3 is right here. right? So that works. So I can say x equals 2 pi over 3. To get to the next solution, though, we have to add 4 pi. That's two revolutions, right? So that's obviously going to be past 2 pi over 3, so that's not going to work. Then we go to 10 pi over 3. Remember, 2 pi is equivalent to 6 pi over 3. So 10 pi over 3 is already outside of our solution. So the only solution for this one is going to be 2 pi over 3. And in my last example here, um, Last example here, I have sine is equal to um, 2x divided by 3 equals negative 1. So again, let's go to our unit circle. We're going to take the inverse sine of both sides, see what um, inverse sine of negative 1 uh, is look like. So negative 1, sine is equal to negative 1 is going to be the angle because this point is 0, negative 1. So the sine is the y-coordinate. So I could say 2x divided by 3 is equal to the inverse sine of negative 1. The only solution is the angle. 3 pi divided by 2. Okay, So now, to go ahead and solve for x, I'm going to use my inverse operations. So I'll multiply by 3 over 2. 3 over 2, multiply by the reciprocal. Those now divide out to leave me with x is equal to 9 pi over 4. So that's my only solution that works. And what you see is 9 pi over 4 is that angle is over 2 pi, 2 pi, because 2 pi is equivalent to 8 pi over 4. So since that's larger than 2 pi, it doesn't fall within our constraint of our solutions between 0 and 2 pi. So therefore, we'd write this one has no solution. Okay? Where the other ones, they went over, but we at least had one solution within 0 and 2 pi. This one doesn't have anything between 0 and 2 pi, so therefore, it's no solution. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you solve your um, your trigonometric equation by you with multi-angles. Thanks.